Welcome back. I'm Nathan. We're glad to have you for another round of stories. If you're new here, check out blindspotcollective.org slash unhallowed to listen to our previous episodes from this year and last year. A heads up that these stories may be disturbing to some young audiences. This week, we're exploring family. Family. Family gives, but it also takes, doesn't it? Can't it? Sit back, relax as much as you can, and settle in for this harrowing story about a woman looking to contact a loved one beyond the grave. Of Seance and Tragedy is up first. us, Father, for our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Are you the one they call Mother Ethel? That is my name, child, though for your sake, I wish you had never come to know it. You are Lady Van Strom, I presume? Yes, please come in. The storm has been absolutely dreadful this evening. It truly has been. It is indeed dark times for such a dark business. Please make yourself comfortable. May I offer you a cup of tea? Yes, please. The cold is terrible to these old bones of mine. Of course. Now, your associate assured me that you could help. I've been told that you are the best, that you truly possess the gift of further sight. Sugar? No, thank you. I suppose some would call my further sight a gift, although it tends to become more of a curse. (laughs) But tell me, what is uh, that you seek, child? Well, I suppose you must get this request quite often, but I... I seek the means to reach out to William von Strom. My husband. I see. Tell me more about your William. Oh, Mother Ethel, he was the most loving person. He was the most gentle and caring person I've ever met. We were happily married for ten years. And tell me, child, what happened to your William? Two years ago, we decided to visit St. James Park. Everything was perfect. I felt as if I had been blessed by the Lord to have such a loving soul by my side. We held hands and I gazed into William's eyes. But William, he... He wasn't looking into my eyes. What do you mean? It was as though he were looking directly through me. His eyes rolled back, he collapsed... And a dreadful convulsion took hold of him and I... Mother Ethel, have you ever had a loved one die in your own arms? I have seen death in many ways throughout my life, but not in the tragic manner that you've had to endure, my child. Well, well, death, it comes so subtly. I held William in my arms that day. I held his face as he slipped away from me, and suddenly he was no longer there. He was taken from me, Mother Ethel. Taken from you? My child, a person cannot be taken. I was robbed of a long and beautiful life with William. Since then, I have been a miserable wretch wallowing in the dark. I can no longer sleep. I have no desire to eat. I lay in bed every night, and every time I reach out to feel the warmth of his hand, I am met only with emptiness. Yet I can still feel him here. I can sense his spirit lingering. I long to give William a final and proper farewell. And you can help me find peace, Mother Ethel. My poor, poor child. To be so young and yet so full of grief. You have endured such pain. But listen to Mother Ethel. You still have a long life ahead of you to find happiness once again. 
to forge new memories while finding comfort in the old ones. Death is necessary for the cycle of life to continue, painful as it may be. You have my deepest sympathies, but, however, I cannot help you, child. It is not our place to meddle with the laws of nature. I appreciate your kind words, truly. I understand what it is I am asking you to do. Therefore, I'm prepared to pay any price. I, I cannot bear to live like this anymore. I beg you, please, help me. <laughs> Perhaps I did not make myself clear enough. There are things beyond our understanding that must be left alone. My abilities allow me to see that which cannot be seen. But there are reasons why these things must remain unseen. Well, if this is a matter of money, I assure you, I can meet any price. We can help each other. I, I, I would, um, no. No, no, I cannot help you, child. I have endured this pain for far too long. I must leave now. What? No, wait, now this is not fair. They told me you have been doing this ceremony for years and yet you refuse to help me? I don't understand. Precisely, you don't understand. These are dangerous ceremonies. They are dangerous to everyone, to me. I would not expect a child such as yourself to understand. This curse, it was not always dangerous. Oh, when I was a child, the dead would speak to me. The dead were my friends. They would tell me messages of comfort for me to pass on to their grieving loved ones. <laughs> but when my mother and father saw it as a means to make money, it all began to change. The ceremonies they forced me to perform began to make me feel as if my very flesh was being ripped from my bones. That is when I learned that the dead are not alone. Not alone? What do you mean? Demons. Dark, unholy creatures that lurk in the realm of the dead. The cost of these ceremonies takes a toll on my body. And each ceremony becomes harder and harder to close. But after all these years, I did what I had to do to survive. I did what I had to just to be able to eat. Now I fear I can no longer have the strength to do this. I'm sorry, my child, but I will not help you farewell. No, no, you cannot do this to me. I won't let you. Heaven's child, what are you doing? I will not be denied my only chance to speak to William. You will perform this ceremony, demons, be damned. Do it all, or so help me God, I will shoot. For you have lost a beautiful thing in your life. I know William loved you because deep inside you are a good person. That is why you will not shoot me. I will walk away, and you, child, you do what you will. I... I... I can't. You have let your grief drive you to madness. It is a pity you are so unwilling to let go of your own pain. Oh, I will help you reach out to William. But you will quadruple your offer, and that is my yes, price. I'll do it. Please, just let me speak to William, and I will give you anything you ask. Very well. Then let us begin. Now listen closely, child. I must give you a final warning. To commune with the dead is to open an unseen window to another world. And on the other side, there are those who reside with the dead. Those whom you do not want to come out. What you hear may or may not be who you seek. Do you understand? I know you can find my beloved... Do you understand? Yes. Yes, Mother Ethel. I do. Very well. Take my hands. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
We call to the shades beyond our earthly realm. Hear us. Heed our call. Come forth from the nether world, William von Strom. Come, William von Strom. Come forth from the grave. If you are here with us, I bid you give us a sign. <gasps> He's here. It's William. I know it. Wait, child. You must first be sure. If this truly be the spirit of William von Strong, I command you, speak. Let your voice be heard. William? Oh, William, I can hear you. Elena, I love you. Come to me. Elena, join me. I love you so much, William. Lord knows I wish I were with you. Join me, Elena. Join me. Kill yourself. Be with me. William, I, I, I don't understand. End your life. Join me! Join Mother, what is Join happening? Now. This isn't William. Something is wrong. In the name of the Lord, uh, 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 I command you, uh, go back to the abyss. In the name of the Lord, I... I... I Mother Ethel! Mother Ethel! Uh, I can't breathe. It, it, it hurts. It, it hurts. <laughs> Dear God in heaven, what have I done? Help! Help, somebody please help me! You called that and we came. Will you burn us in the abyss? And you will die alone tonight. We will rip your soul apart! <laughs> <laughs> My soul, consider it ripped apart. What a fantastic show. I'll definitely be keeping the lights on tonight. This next play features some more cool characters and a crazy game. Stick around for Fragment. Don't touch my puzzle. Grandma always said that. Every time 10-year-old Henry Baxter came over and every time after she caught him looking at it. As long as he could remember, the vast, beautiful piece had lie completed on the sitting room table. It was easily longer and wider than he was tall. A marvel in itself that his grandmother had managed to put the whole thing together. The puzzle was dark at the edges. Black blending into indigo, purple, blue, and spiraling into warmer colors. Red, oranges, yellows, greens, a sky blue here and there. Assembled, the colorful pieces showcased a spacescape, a galaxy, moons spiraling around planets, planets circling suns, brilliant points of light dotting the background. Looking at it, Henry could imagine floating among the stars. Grandma ambled into the kitchen for cookies and tea. Henry loved his grandmother's confections, but today it was cloudy and drab outside, and so the colors of the puzzle caught his eye like a flytrap and held it there. His mind was alive with the thought of sightseeing his way across the cosmos. He imagined walking through amber forests, scaling crimson canyons, or sailing a ship across violet seas under a burning orange sky. So many adventures. Mindful of his grandmother's words, he kept his hands up as he walked around the table, lest he creep and touch. Nonetheless, 
An eager step caused him to brush against the table, knocking a piece loose. He jumped and looked guiltily in the direction of the kitchen. Grandma didn't seem to notice. Quickly, he searched for the piece, noticing a small, colorful blip on the carpet under the table. He crouched down and shuffled on all fours across the carpet. There, a puzzle piece. Or two. Had he knocked them both loose? Confusion overtook him. He frowned. Both pieces looked so alike. They were dark, bluish indigo, so Henry figured they belonged at the edge. He crawled from under the table and started checking the borders of the puzzle, but he could find no break. Along the wall, he could see his grandmother's shadow moving back and forth. Frantically, he glanced down at the puzzle pieces in his hand. Where did it go? Then he saw it, a gap on the edge. He looked down at the pieces he held. It seemed either one would fit, but there was no way both would. Almost done. Are you ready for cookies? Y yeah, Grandma. Henry's eyes shot back and forth between the kitchen entryway and the puzzle before him. He was running out of time. If both pieces were the same, it didn't matter which one he used, right? Frantically, he slammed one into place. He had just enough time to tuck the other in his pocket before his grandmother emerged, tray in hand. Here we are, love. Let's go eat. She carried the tray of cookies and tea to the dining room. Following, Henry inhaled the sweet, sweet scent of chocolate chip. <sighs> but on his way to the dining room, Henry noticed a small rip in the dull yellow wallpaper in the hall. His relief evaporated all at once. The tear revealed that under the dull yellow there lie a starry nightscape. But who would paint a house like that? The puzzle. The gap in the paper reminded him of the edges of the puzzle, all dark with bright spots of light. As he stared, the rip spread. Little by little, almost like a crack, a fire, a scar. What you looking at? Henry swallowed a lump in his throat. What is it? Is there a spider? She was looking right at it. How could she not see it? Henry wasn't sure what to do. He'd hurried to the table and crammed a cookie in his mouth. Then another, and another. Every so often he'd glance back at the wall. The crack kept growing. Slow down, you choke. We can see you. <coughs> see? Henry scooted right off his chair. I want to go play outside. All right, all right, no need for a fuss. Henry scampered to the sliding door without another word, his grandmother following more slowly. He yanked it open and ran out and stopped. Ordinarily, he'd hop right on the swings and in a matter of moments be airborne. Now, half the swing set was gone, lost in starry darkness that bled out of nowhere. Henry looked to his grandmother and was relieved to see she was just as confused as he was. Well, go on, Henry. I know how much you love the swings. Henry looked back to the set. He wasn't sure how the frame was upright when one half didn't even exist. Henry sat on the half that was there. It held his weight, just like normal. Nervously, he started to swing. How had Grandma not noticed? He swung back and forth trying to figure out what to do. Kick, push, kick. Soon, he soared higher and higher. As he ascended, the familiar freedom of lift overcame him. He closed his eyes and imagined himself airborne. He could fly. Yes, fly. Fly right the, wind. the icy voice set Henry's spine shivering. He almost fell off the swing. Clutching the chains tightly, he opened his eyes. There on the ground, his grandmother watched, smiling, completely unaware of the starry dark that now encroached upon the edges of the yard. It wasn't just in the yard. As he swung higher, Henry was reaching the height of the tree, and amidst the branches, more of that swirling, inky darkness emerging from it. A different sort of branch. Pitch black. Star-studded, the twigs on it poised, flexing, reaching for him. He dove off the swing and tumbled into the grass. Ugh. Henry! His grandmother shouted. 
There he lay, waiting for the world to stop spinning. He sat up just as the void swept over his grandmother. One moment she was there, the next she wasn't, lost in the dark abyss. Where she had been, Henry could see the yard, but it looked different. Thin and dead grass. Beyond it, aged, dry, shriveled wood in place of the normally new and robust fence. Looking into the voids, he could see more. The swing set wasn't gone, but a twisted and rusty mockery. So frail looking, he was surprised that it stood at all. Then his grandmother reappeared from the darkness, as simply as if striding out of another room. She looked at him. Are you okay? I'm fine. He got up and retreated, looking his grandmother over. She looked no different than before she had been in wherever, whatever. What's wrong? Did you hit your head? I'm fine. The darkness pushed in further. In it, he could see some bizarre, warped version of everything. The voice came from the tree, now a twisted, black-barked thing with even darker leaves. Among them, so many fingers, so many hands. They crabbed at the air and somehow found purchase. They pulled, like someone climbing out of a pool. A head appeared. His head, but pale, with thin, wispy hair and dead, yellow eyes. No! Henry remembered the puzzle piece in his pocket. This all started when he touched the puzzle. He started back toward the house, ignoring the confusion of his grandmother. Part of the house had been engulfed by swirling shadows. Where the screen door once was, Henry saw darkness and shattered, starry glass. What now? Oh, you want to go back inside? No. Through the umbrage, he could see the remains of the house, derelict and dilapidated. He didn't know what would happen if he tried to run through. And yet, the normal space in the backyard was shrinking. Henry searched desperately. From what he could see, it didn't look like the roof of the house had changed much yet. The chimney. Against the house was a lattice for his grandmother's tomatoes. Without a second thought, Henry bolted to it, scrambling away from the encroaching shadows. Darkness called. In it, so many stars. Were those points of light? Eyes? Spindly arms and twisted little fingers gave chase, but he nimbly evaded them. He scrambled onto the roof, ran to the chimney, and scooted his way down. <coughs> The puzzle! Around him, the walls were dark and twisty. Most were covered in the galaxy pattern. Only small patches of wallpaper left. He heard a strange sort of breathing coming from all around, and bodiless arms dragged themselves from the shadows, reaching for him. No! He jumped over the hands and ran to the table. He pulled the piece from his pocket out to compare, working his way around the edges of the puzzle. As he found it and pulled it free, an arm grabbed his ankle and yanked him across the carpet. Yeah. He dug his fingers in, struggled. Around him, the walls peeled back. The roof lifted away, revealing a deep, starry night overhead. It started bigger, brighter, and a pupil rolled around narrowed, focusing directly on Henry. No! In a last bit of desperation, Henry wrenched free, staggered to the table, and slammed the right piece into place. The darkness vanished. The ceiling returned. Plain, yellow wallpaper. He heard the quiet rumble of the sliding door. His grandmother came around the corner, exasperated. What's got into you? And look now you're all dirty. Bath time, young man. Okay. Once in the bathroom, Henry stripped off his dirty clothes. He breathed a happy sigh while his grandmother filled the tub with hot water and the bubbly soap. Then he looked at the mirror. In the reflection of the mirror, it was still dark. 
His grandmother's reflection withered and skin peeling, turned around gazing at him with dead yellow eyes. Henry, it's bath time. Thank you for listening to 2021's Unhallowed. We are a company that is dedicated to producing radically inclusive content that cultivates and celebrates new work, emerging artists, diverse audiences, and fresh ideas. Of Seance and Tragedy was written by Carlos Silva and stars Alexis Park, Lolly Boroff, and Darvin Jennings. Fragment was written by Jermaine Cooper and features Alyssa Ann Austin, Sarah Aida Leclerc, Kevin Fan. A special thanks to our creative team, Nathan Wetter and Shalina Hefner, and our sound designer, Jack Mason Brazi, for making this project possible. Make sure you come back next Sunday, Halloween, for our final Unhallowed Part 2 episodes. If you'd like to learn more about Blindspot Collective and our work, visit blindspotcollective.org or follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Happy Halloween.